Good day, my name is Anissa barton Tonti, and I'm the Social Media Specialist for the College of Extended and International Education here at California State University, Dominguez Hills. I'll be your host for this presentation, so welcome. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website and social media resources shortly after this session. Feel free to download the Construction Project Management Certificate Programs Information Kit for details about the program and additional resources covered in this webinar. The address is bit.ly slash CSUDH dash CMX dash info kit. We've provided a link for you in the chat for those who are participating live. It will also be available via follow-up email to all attendees, as well as on our website. Now, before we jump in, I'd like to review the Zoom controls. This session is being presented in a webinar format, so you won't need to worry about connecting your microphone or your camera. However, we want your participation, so help us address your needs. Use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're joining us from the Zoom desktop app or web browser, or in the top right of your screen if you're on a mobile device. Please ask your questions in the Q&A panel rather than in the chat panel. Now in that chat panel, we'll be providing helpful links and other information. Once you click the Q&A button, a dialog box will open allowing you to type your question. Our marketing staff members, Stephanie Biukian and Keith Otterberg, as well as our program coordinator, Elizabeth Legg, are standing by to assist. We'll be answering those questions at the end of the session. Although often you may find that the question you have has been answered during those program overviews. So with that being said, let's take a quick look at our session agenda. We'll begin by meeting our certificate faculty who will introduce you to the program via an overview of benefits, expectations, and course details. Then we'll go over the registration and login information and address your questions in the Q&A session. And now to kick off today's presentation, I'll turn it over to Mr. Jay Jefferson, one of our lead instructors for the program. Jay, take it away. Thank you, Anissa, I appreciate that. Anissa and the rest of the team, they do such a great job of making this engine run and uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you for your time and welcome to the construction management uh, project information, uh, program information session. So we're gonna, today we're gonna spend some time helping you understand more about the program and toward the end we'll do a Q and A. And so first of all, I'd just like to introduce the instructors, a great team of individuals who come together uh, collectively to serve our community and the college. So starting from left to right is uh, David Stern, uh, Larry Coltman, myself, Jay Jefferson, Linda Newton, Austin Pell, and Michael Lalu. And with the collective, uh, if you look at us collectively, I think we've got probably about 180 years of experience. So anyway, so let's talk about the industry outlook. Uh, there's a lot of positive things happening out there right now. Uh, you know, the vaccine is available, uh, the state is open back up. And so it looks like the economy is really coming back strong. Uh, Employment opportunities are out there, and especially in the construction industry, a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, currently, we're uh, primarily teaching online. And uh, so this, you know, this presents a good opportunity for students who are interested to uh, take the program classes in the comfort of their own home. And uh, you can advance your career, you know, you can do uh, professional development. You know, there's just a lot of things that, uh, that you can do through our program. So I'm gonna tell you some of the things that uh, give us indication on uh, what's happening out there. There's one specific um, indicator that I like to use because it's very popular and it's, um, it's kind of, it's very relatable, right? I mean, it's called the Architects uh, Billing Index. And the Architects Billing Index is created by AIA which is, if, you, if you're not familiar with them, the uh, American Institute of Architects. Any licensed architect that's um, worth their salt has a license from AIA. And so they get information from design firms all around the country, and they get a feel for what's happening um, in the construction industry. So they're able to project um, nine to 12 months out 
Um, you know, because look at it this way, if you have things in design, those things in design are eventually going to go to construction. And so that's, you know, if you, if you think about large projects, usually large projects spend a year or two in design, then they move to construction. So that's how we can project further out how the construction is coming. And so um, contractors, designers, banks, uh, business leaders, you know, everybody, a lot of people use this, uh, what we call ABI, the Architects Billing Index. And some of the most positive trends that come out of that index are, um, uh, you know, first of all, demand for design services, right? And, uh, you know, so design is, is happening at an accelerated pace right now. And so they have it, what they have is an indicator. It says that it's uh, 57 points right now, 50, 57, 58 points, right? And that, what that means is anything over 50 points is that uh, construction is, you know, design is really uh, booming right now. It's, it's accelerating. Uh, another indicator is if you think about, you know, just what's happening in the um, Southern California area, you know, it's uh, a lot of things going on because you have uh, a labor shortage, right? And so thinking about the labor shortage, uh, you think about, you know, the activities that are going on out there. You know, LAX has a big program. Uh, you know, there's just not enough people to fill those positions. And so, um, you know, we are, we are actually approached by general contractors and subcontractors of all sizes on a regular basis. I get approached personally, the program gets approached, and I'm sure other instructors get approached as well, but they're asking, uh, you know, do you have students that are, are ready, that are graduating, that you can recommend to uh, come into our company? And it's kind of like a, a, a open door that we have. If we, if we have students that, are, that we feel are accelerating or are successful in the program, uh, we can recommend them to uh, these uh, contracting firms. And so another, another thing is, is that, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we talked about LAX a little bit, but you know, there's a lot of construction in the pipeline, especially in the uh, LA area. Uh, you've got the uh, SoFi Stadium. You know, of course, we know the stadium's up and running. That was a three billion project by itself. But there's another couple of billion that are is still being built out over the next couple of years. Uh, right across the street from that is the. Uh, LA Clipper Stadium, which is a couple of billion by itself. Um, LAX, we already mentioned, uh, with the People Mover, the Conrack, and multiple projects that are going on. Uh, LAX is being built out uh, over 15 years of $14 billion. So I mean, the Architects Building Index mainly or primarily addresses um, how uh, non residential um, construction. But, you know, if you look at what's happening in the housing industry itself, uh, you know, in residential market, there's a shortage of housing right now. So with that shortage, uh, we just, we can't build houses fast enough. So, and, and that's the thing about our program is we can accommodate, like if you're interested in uh, small residential housing or multi-level housing or whatever, or, or commercial building, we have people that can address your needs in those areas through our instructions. So let's talk about who should attend. Who, who is the target audience? Well, basically it's you. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, as far as construction laborers, you know, lower level management, I mean, we see a, a very diverse background of people that come into our program. But it's primarily from uh, the construction side, uh, people who are looking to move up, uh, architects, engineers, real estate developers, uh, you know, and also if you don't have a, much of a background in construction, this program is for you too, because as I mentioned, there's such a labor shortage right now, it just creates opportunities for people. And so, you know, whether you're entry level uh, in construction or if you're just trying to find out if it's a good fit, I mean, you know, we have a lot of people that, well, not a lot, but at least uh, 25 percent of the people that um, come into our program have no construction background at all and they're just really looking for 
uh, new opportunities. I remember we had this one uh, young lady, she came out of healthcare and uh, she wanted to go into construction and she felt quite comfortable with that. And so let's talk about employment opportunities. So generally speaking, uh, especially depending on a person's background and experience and education, opportunities vary from, you could get an internship, um, you could be a project engineer, assistant project manager uh, for various types of uh, general contractors and subcontractors. And, you know, I should emphasize to you, especially on the subcontractor side, because if you think about it this way, there's at least 10 times as many subcontractors as there are generals. And so your opportunities multiply if you have any background at all in the sub trades you know, use that, use that background in your sub trade to launch yourself into a project management role in the same trade. Okay, so uh, with that, we're going to uh, move on. Okay, so let's talk about the program overview. So there's eight courses covering the essential aspects of construction project management. And, you know, basically, we can't teach you everything you need to know about construction project management because that is a, a hands-on um, learning thing. Uh, you have to have uh, on-the-job experience. But what we can do is give you the fundamental and basic information that you will need to succeed. When you come out of, out of our program, you will understand terms. You will understand basic concepts and ideas that will help you be successful. So the, the program is uh, a certificate awarded upon uh, the completion of all eight classes. Uh, it can be completed as, as little time as six months, but you have to be very aggressive in that multiple classes at the same time. Um, also, it's online Blackboard, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there is some chance that we'll be back in the spring of 22, but right now, strictly speaking, uh, we're gonna be uh, online. So uh, course sequence. So um, the prerequisite is uh, CMX 903 must be completed by uh, before you take 902. And we're gonna explain uh, more about that later. Uh, also um, CMX 902, 903 and 925 uh, must be completed before you take uh, CMX 920. All other courses can be taken in any order, all right? Okay, so. Uh, the schedule primarily is weekends. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so weeknights and Saturdays. Uh, typically, the courses are one, uh, one three-hour class per meeting. And uh, there, there might be some exceptions to that, but that's generally speaking. Courses are scheduled twice each calendar year. And att attendance and participation are required uh, for you to get credit. And I wanna just emphasize one thing because although we can't mandate that you have your cameras on, it is important for you to make sure the instructors see you, they know you, they're able to engage with you. Uh, you know, you should be asking questions. Uh, you know, you should be uh, giving input, giving, making comments at the appropriate times about your experience. You know, I, I enjoy learning from other students. I'm a, I, I consider myself a lifetime learner. And uh, I learn a lot from you all. So make sure you're prepared to engage when you come into the program. All right. So with that, we're gonna um, just give you a quick list of what the courses are. And then after that, we're gonna uh, go into, you're gonna hear from the instructors individually. So we have CMX 905, which is financing real estate acquisitions, CMX 904, construction accounting, CMX 903, plan reading, CMX 902, estimation, CMX 925, bidding and scheduling, CMX 921, real estate law for construction, CMX 926, construction safety, and CMX uh, 920, which is field project management. And so with that, we're going to hear from the instructors individually, and we're gonna start out with David Stern. Thanks, Jay. So uh, I teach CMX 905, which is called Financing Real Estate Acquisitions. So I've been in the industry for over 30 years. 
Uh, I've been both a licensed uh, professional engineer, civil engineer, and also a licensed general contractor during that time. I started in the industry as an assistant superintendent to superintendent, to project manager, and then to owner of a contracting company. So in the class, by the way, the class is a one-day class. It's a little different schedule than some of the others. It's a one-day, six-hour class. So it's three-hour morning, three-hour afternoon, then you're done. And there's no prerequisites, so you can take uh, my class in whatever uh, sequence you would prefer. Talking about financing real estate acquisitions generally means finding out where the money is, finding out who's the, who the potential lenders are, whether they be banks or pension funds, or there's many other sources of, of uh, lending. And I try to emphasize the steps that a student should take or a professional in the field should take to actually access the money. And the most important aspect is something called the pro forma, which is essentially the financial model of a project. And so when you're talking to lenders, you're talking to investors, frankly, when you're talking to yourself uh, at night, <laughs> you want to know how the project is going to go as a financial success. So the pro forma is definitely the most important step. And we go very slowly and step by step on how to build a basic pro forma. But I go branch out further from that, and I also go into other pre-construction aspects. That is, what are the things you have to go through prior to launching a project? And in addition to pro forma and lenders, the other critical issue is what's called entitlements, which is getting the approvals of the public agencies. So we spend quite a bit of time on that. Uh, in general, I like to talk, think that my course is how to get from the concept of a project to the kickoff of a project, and which then leads into what many of my colleagues are going to cover. So hope you will join me. As I said, it's a one-day course. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Michael, to tell you about his class. Thank you, David. Uh, my name is Michael Lalu, and uh, I've been teaching. I've been teaching for over uh, 10 years and I've been in the construction management field for uh, over 25 years. Uh, in in the, the class that I teach, which is construction accounting, uh, it, it, the first thing that I do is uh, give the opportunities to the students to introduce themselves to the class. So that becomes like the beginning network uh, for, for all the students. So they, they tell about who they work for, job title and duty, and, and uh, why they're taking this class. So one of the sessions, we cover the purpose of accounting. Uh, we, we go over accounting terminology and common documents used in accounting. Uh, we used uh, the completed contract and percentage complete, completion contract methods uh, we talk about uh, cost ledgers and general ledgers. Uh, we talk about job cost reporting and, and good business practices. Uh, in another session, we talk about uh, contract billings. Uh, we talk about lien rights and accounting for contract revenue and profits. We, we talk about personnel and payroll processing and reporting. Uh, we also discuss certified payroll, uh, controlling labor costs, subcontracting process, uh, the purchase order and its proper uh, process and use. And, and finally, at the end, we, uh, we cover accounting for equipment costs, uh, you know, renting versus uh, buying the options. Uh, and we, we include also accounting for overhead costs, uh, fraud and how to prevent it, uh, financial statements and the elements of litigation and application of uh, different technologies. So there is a lot of uh, uh, information that we cover. I'd like to engage all the students so everybody uh, will get the chance to share experience with the rest of the class. And it's uh, usually very uh, rewarding to, uh, to, to my students. 
So I hope to see you soon. And thank you. And I'll pass it to Larry. I teach plan reading and cost estimating. I've been in the construction industry for 60 plus years. I'm a registered architect, licensed general contractor, and a California certified access specialist. I encourage and require participation in class discussions, and I certainly encourage you to be visible in the Zoom gallery so that uh, we can have uh, a view of each other and, and understand uh, where we are uh, getting and not getting some of the information, and it, it helps me and it would help you. Plan reading is like, a, like another language. There are many design disciplines that are involved in uh, creating the, the building plans. Uh, civil engineering, structural, mechanical, electrical, landscape architect, interior design. And they all come to the, the table with different, a, a different language and code regulations. The plans reflect the instructions from the architect and the engineers for building the building. As the various consulting disciplines are removed from the floor plan that should be uh, on your screen at the moment. Uh, the underlying architectural drawings are uncovered. In looking at these plans, the course touches on the meanings of lines, symbols, and schematics, dimensions, and how to understand them, how notes enhance the drawings, how all, all of this speaks that new language. Classes are taught employing Bluebeam software, Excel, drawings, actual photos of the buildings and construction, and 3D modeling to assist in understanding the, uh, the building and the construction process. In cost estimating, and I, I should note that both uh, plan reading and cost estimating classes are taught on Saturday mornings from 8.30 to 11.30. Uh, in the cost estimating class, We'll be using the plans from the plan reading class. Students will work in teams to create a cost estimate for, the build, for building that house and defining the scope of work for each of the contractors who will be on site to build a portion of the building is a key to being able to produce a competent quantity takeoff and an estimate of the cost of construction. Quantity takeoffs or surveys are vital to doing a cost estimate. Simple math and simple algebra are necessary uh, to be able to define the quantities of materials and labor required. And the class will exercise, absolutely exercise your math muscle. Again, we'll use drawings, photos, and 3D models to tease out the quantity takeoff. And at the last class, we'll look at all of the team estimates and discuss the successes, failures, and issues raised in the team's cost estimates, and then we'll compare their work with the actual cost of constructing that building. I look forward to seeing you, dialoguing with you, and sharing time with you in the plan reading and cost estimating classes. Now, here's Linda. Um, I wanted to um, state that when I first started in 1989, I became an estimator project manager for Sully Miller, which is a heavy highway construction company. And when I started, I knew nothing about construction, equipment, bidding, anything. And I remember how overwhelming it was to get started. So I keep that in mind when I teach my class. Um, currently, bidding um, so many different types of bids in the industry um, in the Southern California area. We cover the major um, types of bids and um, go through them in detail starting from the beginning. Um, I really like to, we like to evaluate the risk and um, what's um, gonna be involved in bidding and submitting bids. I do some group exercises and have some guest speakers. And then the second half of the class, we go through scheduling and we start with basic scheduling, just putting things on a board, um, moving to, through Excel up to Microsoft projects. Um, in Microsoft projects, which is the critical path method scheduling software, we just get into it very little. Um, the college or the extended education does offer a uh, three week or four week project management class. So if you really want to learn Microsoft projects, I encourage you to take that class. But we go through just the basics in scheduling um, so that we understand 
um, how a schedule is put together and what impacts the schedule. And then the very last class, we um, do a group project and um, everybody presents it the last class and the class usually loves it. It's very informative and it shows what you've learned in the class. Uh, like Larry stated, I really would like to see everybody's faces and have everybody participate in the class. It really helps the whole entire class when everybody participates and asks questions. So I look forward to having you in my class. Um, I always enjoy all my students. And so next up is Austin. Uh, thank you, Linda. Yes, my name is Austin. Uh, last name is Pell. I teach the CMX 921 Law for Construction uh, class. I've been a member of the State Bar since California State Bar since 1997. Um, I'm also a member of half a dozen federal bar associations and licensed to practice, United States Tax Court, United States Patent and Trademark Office. United States uh, Ninth Circuit and Court of Appeals. I practiced construction and real estate law from 97 until about 2002. And since 2002, I've been employed in the construction industry as a construction manager, construction project inspector, structural steel inspector, um, construction professional, contract professional, and uh, sundry uh, job titles and roles uh, as a consultant. Now my class is six sessions, three hour sessions in the evenings. There are no homeworks, uh, there are no assignments, no quizzes and no exams, no required text. Uh, part of the reason is because uh, construction law is very difficult conceptually and you'll, you'll have enough on grasping uh, everything that's being taught to you in my in the three hours that you attend my class. Attendance is compulsory uh, to receive the grade, passing grade in this class, as in the other classes in this series. Uh, I also graduated from this program in 2013. So I am, I once sat where you are today, wondering whether to enroll or not. <laughs> and the class has been very good for me. It boosted my career. Uh, the certificate program uh, was a boost to my career. I hope it does the same for you. Here's my certificate from 2013. Uh, I'll take you through very quickly uh, the nuts and bolts of my class. Session number one, we learn about an overview of the judicial system and different methods of dispute resolution. Session two, uh, you're taught contract formation and defenses, remedies and damages for breach of contract. Session three, uh, bid law, construction contracts again, and breaches, breaches of contract. In more detail, session three is more detailed than session two, although some of the topics are repeated. Session four, uh, encompasses delay claims, differing site conditions, and changes to construction contracts. Session five, mechanics, liens, stop notices, releases, and bonds. Session six, contract estate license law, claim prevention, and good business practices. Uh, I tried to tailor my classes for everyone. So whether you work or are a contractor or work for or are an owner and whether you practice uh, your trade in the uh, uh, public sector or private sector i'm i tailor the class so there's something in it for everyone and thank you and i look forward to seeing you and now back to the illustrious jay jefferson thank you austin all right, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself, my background and uh, the two classes I teach. So I teach uh, construction safety and uh, construction project, uh, field project management. Uh, my background is, um, I'm actually a product of the CSU system, graduated from the system. I um, came back to work in the system. I worked in the system for 30 years. I actually worked on campus, uh, for about nine of those 30 years, I worked in the chancellor's office for the rest of the time. 
Uh, that building that's behind me, I actually managed the pre-construction for, but I've also managed a lot of other construction on campus as well. And so now I'm teaching in the program. I've been teaching in the program for about, uh, since about 2011. So I, I enjoy uh, teaching. I have a passion for it. I love what I do. And I love supporting other people and helping them uh, jumpstart their careers. So uh, I'll tell you, first of all, about construction safety. And the first thing is, is that uh, I get asked this question all the time. If I take OSHA 10 and OSHA 30, will I be able to waive the construction safety program, the class? The, a the answer is no. You will not be able to waive any of our classes. Uh, construction safety is really not anything like OSHA 10 or OSHA 30. It's really for, it's designed for project managers who want to understand their role in safety and managing a construction project. And we will, of course, uh, be covering OSHA standards along the way, but it's nothing like OSHA 10 or OSHA 30. Um, so we'll have guest speakers, uh, industry experts come in and uh, share their experience and knowledge and lecture. Um, we'll be talking about excavation and trenching. Um, you know, what happens uh, when, when a, you have an accident on your construction site, uh, there's going to be uh, Typically, there's going to be an OSHA inspector that's going to come out. Uh, you need to know how to respond to an OSHA inspection. Uh, managing accidents, uh, working at elevated heights. Also, we'll have uh, brief quizzes and a discussion board. And that's those are what we call asynchronous learning. So your synchronous learning is you'll be live with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your asynchronous learning will be uh, you'll be doing uh, independent study of the nature of like quizzes and discussion board. Um, I'll say, let me tell you about uh, field project management. So this course has sort of evolved over the years to become, uh, I guess what I would call a capstone course, because you really do need the courses, um, the prerequisites that we talked about earlier, uh, CMX 902, which is estimating CMX 903 plan reading, CMX 925, which is bidding and scheduling. Uh, we will be incorporating all those elements in this course. And we're gonna be talking about construction delivery methods. Um, you know, we'll talk about what CM at risk is. You know, there's a plethora of construction delivery methods out there. We're just gonna cover some of the most popular ones like CM at risk, design bill, progressive design bill, task order construction things like that. So those are all important um, uh, delivery methods for you to know, because if you especially get into commercial construction, uh, there's a good chance that uh, you'll, you'll be involved with those, one of those methods. Uh, one of the key things about these new methods, uh, well, they're relatively new consider, con, uh, compared to design did build, but um, one of the key things about them is you move away from adversarial relationships, right? People learn how to work together. Uh, people are, are learning how to trust each other. Uh, when a problem comes up, it's not like, how are you gonna solve the problem? It's how are we gonna solve the problem? Because you solve problems as a team. And that's probably one of the most important aspects of these modern delivery methods. And so just like in the other class, we will have guest speakers, we will have, uh, industry experts come in and share with you all, and you'll be able to talk to them, ask them questions and things like that. Uh, one of the classes is gonna cover budgeting and constructability reviews. A constructability review is just basically as it sounds, uh, review of the construction documents to make sure that they can be built as designed, uh, built to code, uh, built with quality. Um, another thing will be, uh, uh, class we'll have is uh, project management software. You know, there's there's so many project management softwares out there right now that are useful tools uh, to help you manage your project successfully. And so uh, you're going to have a class on that. And the uh, most important thing we're going to be doing in the class is what we call the mock RFP project. And so the mock RFP project will be actually a um, short version of RFP, you know, like if you go into the real world and I've done a lot of RFP. So 
if you go into a real world scenario, RFP documents can be pretty voluminous. But you know, we've done the short version just so that we can uh, help you understand what an RFP is and that you can uh, get through the class uh, understanding that. And so we're gonna break you up into teams. We're gonna give you an RFP. Your team is gonna write a proposal. Uh, you're gonna be scored by industry experts. You're gonna be interviewed by industry experts and the highest score wins. And so the feedback that we've gotten from other students is that it felt so real. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, something that you, uh, you were actually doing because it is a real world scenario that we're gonna to present to you. So you will be challenged. Just be aware of that you will be challenged. This is not a spe spectator sport where you'll just be sitting back in class. You'll have what we call again, asynchronous learning where you have to get together with your teams and prepare your proposal. And so also we'll have a class on uh, pool planning in the last planner system. And of course, uh, brief quizzes and uh, a discussion board. So that's uh, the detail on my classes. And um, so some of the benefits of the program, I just wanna highlight for you, uh, kind of like, as we've mentioned earlier, we will have subject matter experts through our guest speakers and our instructors. Uh, you know, there are job postings that we become aware of on a regular basis. Uh, this class, or these series of classes are practical. There's a lot, not a lot of theory involved in what we teach you. The stuff that we teach you in the program, you'll be able to take boots on the ground um, almost immediately. Um, so there's uh, projects and activities are ongoing, like uh, before COVID, or we walk this project, um, but we will continue to um, uh, walk projects or have virtual tours of projects in the future. Uh, as we said, it's, it's a relevant course because you will be able to use the information you learn right away. And so as far as career day goes, um, you know, we've had, uh, we had our third career day this year. And um, so what happens during career day is we give our students an opportunity to meet with industry experts and talk to them about um, what's happening in the construction, construction industry, how they can advance their careers, you know, answer their questions, uh, you know, even do some brief interviewing. You know, they, uh, students will, you know, typically bring their resumes uh, to career day and, uh, you know, give an opportunity to interact with uh, professionals. Um, also, we do workshops. You know, sometimes we might have a workshop on, you know, how to interview, what are um, uh, the people looking for, you know, the, uh, the professionals and the construction uh, staff, what are they looking for when they interview uh, for positions? Um, or they might, we might do something on resume writing as well. And uh, so there'll be raffle prizes and things like that at the end too. So they're a lot of fun. Um, you know, uh, we, we don't like to be boring. We like to have fun in our program and we like to give you the opportunity to learn and have fun. So keep those things in mind and uh, we hope that we'll see you. Uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Anissa. Excellent, excellent. I think this was great information and thank you to all the instructors. Um, we've got a lot of details here. So um, all those uh, details from the program instructors, that was a great overview of the program. But we're actually gonna come back to uh, quite a few of those instructors. They're gonna help us out with that Q&A segment momentarily. So first, let's take a quick look at the course delivery and the registration details. Now, almost all of the CSUDH extended education programs are being offered in an online format, which means that students are assigned online access through, their camp through our campus's IT services. Now, each student will need login credentials, which includes uh, access to Blackboard, our learning management system, uh, where all of the course content is distributed, Toro Mail, which is our Gmail-based student email system, and of course, Zoom web conferencing tool. And all of this is uh, combined into our student portal, which is called MyCSUDH. Now, these login credentials are, uh, they consist of your username, your email address, and your password. They're issued to you through our registration office about two to three business days after your registration in your very first course. Now, enrollment is available through our extended education registration office 
Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you've taken a course at CSUDH in the past two years, you can register online using that student portal at mycsudh.edu. We highly recommend that you register early to make sure that there's enough space in the course and will allow enough time for course information and online access to be created and distributed. Now, payment is due at the time of registration. You can pay for your courses individually or for multiple courses all at once. Uh, the federal WIOA, that is the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, provides funding through the California EDD um, Employment Development Department for qualifying students who are currently either unemployed or seeking career training. For more information, please email WIOA at csudh.edu or visit our program website for more information. Now, if you need any additional financial assistance, please Google private student loan providers or connect with sallymay.com for student loan details. Again, we recommend that you register at least one week before the course begins and check your Toro mail and personal emails frequently for special instructions and campus notifications. You'll also wanna be sure to test your account access in Blackboard and get comfortable with the layout of the class, such as where to find announcements, Zoom meeting schedules, discussions, and the like. Let us know via our academic technology services if you're having any difficulty connecting. So now let's get ready to take your questions. Um, if you have any questions for the instructors, anything that you heard in the program overviews or questions regarding uh, the um, uh, getting started with the program, please let us know in the Q&A. And before we jump right into that Q&A, uh, we did a quick poll uh, during the opening of the program. And I'm gonna share those results. And for those who are viewing the recording session, the question that we asked in the poll was, which construction project delivery methods have you participated in? And the options are design, bid, build. We have 9% of our attendees here that have experience with that. CM at risk has nobody that's familiar with that. And that's something that's super important. Progressive design build has 9% of our attendees that are familiar with it. Design build, nobody's familiar. So we're gonna be talking about that in those classes. Task order construction, also has 9% of our attendees that are familiar with it. And no prior experience whatsoever, 73% of our attendees are not familiar. So all of those project delivery methods are things that you're going to be uh, fully introduced and deep dive right into that in your courses with this construction project management program. So we just wanted to share those results with you before we jump in. So, Let's get started. Um, I'm going to ask all of our uh, construction project management faculty to jump in. I'm going to stop our share. And on camera, you should be seeing Mr. Austin Pell, Mr. Larry Kaltman, Michael Lalu, and of course, Jay Jefferson. So our first question um, that always comes up is, how do I get hired in construction project management? if I don't have any prior experience, as was evidenced from the poll, uh, what, what kinds of information do you really need to get your foot in the door? Well, I guess I'll start. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I hate to say it like this, but you gotta, you should take our program. I mean, you know, it's just basic and fundamental, right? I mean, if you have no experience, you need to get uh, educated quickly, right? So if you don't take our program, there are other programs, right? Um, you know, I don't wanna say that ours is the only one, but you need to get uh, some exposure and experience and knowledge of what you're gonna be dealing with in the construction industry. Uh, the other thing is, is if like, you know, and I'm sure the other instructors can attest to this, if you wanna be a laborer, a lot of times they have apprentice programs. If like, if you're not, so like if you're not interested in management, you just wanna, uh, you know, get out there and start hammering something or whatever. 
Uh, there's a lot of apprenticeship programs out there. But like I said earlier, uh, there is a shortage of laborers in the construction industry right now. So they need you. So that you can get an opportunity. I mean, that's not a, uh, a problem. I think if you're interested in being a laborer, you can just go to a trailer somewhere. You see a construction site, just, uh, you know, <clears throat> actually a, a friend of mine told me this that's in the construction industry. He said, um, go, go to a construction site and, you know, just tell them you want to work and you can probably get an apprenticeship. But if you want to, if you're interested in management or something like that, you need to be, get some education. Another element uh, is that uh, companies don't often uh, require that you have uh, specific experience. They are interested in training you in the way they want things done. But they do need to know that you're a person who is uh, uh, task oriented, uh, that you've got some uh, education, which is our program or others and that you are able to uh, take the information that you gain and use it and grow with it and uh, uh, grow into the, the job that they're offering. So it's, you can't be afraid that you don't have no experience, but you have to demonstrate your abilities and your willingness. Okay, so we did get a question from uh, Roderick who asks, do you have to be uh, PE licensed in California in order to attend this course or any of the courses in the program? No, 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 no. Does that answer? <laughs> that helps. Can you tell us a little bit about what is a PE license and what does that mean in, in terms of uh, the construction project management experience? Who wants to take that? Well, Larry, you were doing so well. Why don't you take it? All right. PE is <laughs> professional engineer. Uh, and a professional engineer in the state of California can be, uh, depending upon the, uh, the discipline that you choose to practice, a structural engineer, a civil engineer, mechanical engineer who, who does uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning design and uh, construction, and uh, uh, plumbing as well. Uh, and uh, who did I miss? Uh, electrical engineers. Uh, these are all folks who have taken the, the scientific approach to design and uh, have learned and are practicing the, uh, uh, the creation of their particular discipline uh, in the, uh, the building process. And working with people like me, architects, who uh, work to amalgamate all of those disciplines into a set of building plans that can be uh, brought to the field and built. And just to add to that, Larry, um, there are no prerequisites to coming into the program. No, no. licenses or classes or anything like that. Um, just, just come as you are. Okay. So when they come into the program, we're saying that there's no um, expectations in terms of licensing or certifications. But when they leave the program, what does that certificate uh, give the student? What, do, what is the takeaway with this program overall? I think Austin is the perfect one to answer that question since he was actually a student in the program. Let's see. Answering, uh, it gives you, uh, the, the certificate gives you a, a very broad overview of all the aspects of construction. A uh, good general knowledge, and you have a certificate from a, a, a very good four-year state school to to put on the wall, and if you if you but you get out of this course what you put in. If you if you pay attention, you you uh, you you learn. You you take the time to learn, and uh, what what is being taught to you. Then you come out, like I say, very well rounded, and you can, if you're inexperienced, you can hit the ground running. If you are experienced, you learn uh, um, there's a cornucopia of knowledge that, that you didn't know about. Uh, I've been in the industry since 2002, and I, I graduated 2013, I think, 2012, 
And I learned so much new stuff. There was so much. I thought I knew everything, but you know, you know the more you, you the more you think, you know, the more you 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 don't know. And uh, I, I, I'm still learning now. These bookshelves are full of construction um, building codes and construction books on the left here, and there are some and on the other side. There are law books, and uh, I mean, learning is a continual thing. And this this uh, surrogate program will really really help me. It um, it I was unemployed when I when I took the uh, the classes, and I became employed uh, halfway through. Uh, my um, the agents I worked uh, sporadically for were very impressed that I was taking this course, and uh, one of them uh, hired me immediately based on this. Does that, does that answer the question? Um, I think that uh, answers the question. That that does a great job, and um, I'll contribute thanks. that uh, when we've done our construction career days, uh, our those fairs are populated with local construction and, and major national construction companies. And we've had quite a few of their employees who were former students of this program. So I think that's, uh, that speaks really highly of the quality of the experience that the students get as a takeaway. Um, one of our students uh, that's in the chat right now, Christopher asks, I'm starting in real estate investing and I have no experience. Will this course help me understand the construction side of the project from single family to multiple units, as an example? Mary? Uh, it, 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 Christopher, it'll give you a, a, a starting point. Uh, obviously, the more education and knowledge you have coming into the program, the more you're able to use the, uh, uh, the learning experience to enhance what you already know. If you don't know much, then this becomes the, the basis, the groundwork that uh, you need to get your start. And, uh, and I've, I've said to people uh, for a long time now, uh, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, learning is a lifelong experience. And every day, I have to tell you that I wake up every day eager to go to work, and every day I learn something new, and every day I'm able to apply that to the next day's work. So that's, that's the way I think it, it's, it's important to approach this program and uh, just be a sponge, be open to learning everything that we can throw at you and uh, everything that you can drag out of us, uh, you know, to answer your questions. Absolutely. And this is probably our final question for this time is when the student is completed in the program, are they staying in touch with you guys as or the, the faculty overall, Linda, um, uh, all of you? Um, are they engaging with you outside of the classroom? Are there student organizations? Are there professional organizations that they can also partake in to continue that learning once they've completed the program? Yeah, there's actually quite a few, which um, we don't have time to name them all, but just a few that I'm affiliated with is uh, CMAA, which is the Construction Management Association of America, DBIA, which is the Design Build Institute of America. And there's uh, women in construction, I mean, women engineers, I mean, there's all kind of uh, various types of uh, organizations that uh, you can network through uh, meet a lot of people and actually uh, get job opportunities through as well. I forgot, what was the other part of your uh, question? Just just wondering how do the students stay connected and how do they continue oh, okay. yeah, learning? Yeah. And so um, to address that, uh, I'm sure other inspect instructors have comments as well, but I'll just say from my perspective, I had a student that graduated, I want to say a couple of years ago now, and just called me the other day to, uh, to ask a question about uh, something uh, uh, related to the industry. And so uh, we're all open. I, I give my personal cell phone out. My, my cell phone number is in the syllabus. So, I mean, uh, students are always welcome to call me even after they graduate. I'm sure other instructors could comment. Like Michael, you might have a comment on that. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Um, uh, one of the uh, another benefits of this program is uh, is it building a network of contacts. Uh, it starts here. Uh, you 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 will be able to connect with your classmates. Many times, those classmates they can be superintendents, they can be project engineers. Uh, laborers, you know, uh, old uh, uh, project managers. So th that network starts right there. And, and uh, a lot of students, they, uh, they exchange their emails or phone numbers and they help each other. You know, uh, one, one of the students might be hiring in their company and they, they let the other students know. That's in addition to the career day that we already discussed. And, uh, and yes, many of uh, my students, they stay in touch with me. You know, I, uh, I like, uh, like uh, Jay said, you know, I have, uh, I provide my, uh, my phone number as well as my email. And uh, as an example, one, one of my students recently uh, just sent me an email. She's trying to change uh, her employment from a private uh, construction company to uh, public uh, uh, public works uh, public agency. So she was asking me for some advice and you know, how to change her resume. And uh, so yes, the network starts here, and uh, it's a, a long time uh, relationship. Excellent. To you. And I I appreciate that um, all of you as faculty members are also working professionals currently working professionals. Um, and speaking of, so what happens when a student is one of those working professionals? Uh, Salam asks in the question in the uh, Q and A, would you advise taking the course if they're going for their bachelor's degree at the same time? Is this something that's a, a doable with the schedule? Um, I think Salam, you have to answer that question for yourself. Uh, how intensively are you pursuing your bachelor's degree? How much time do you have uh, outside of that pursuit? And uh, uh, do you want to take on another uh, workload? And, and let's be honest, this is a workload if you're going to be uh, pursuing it properly. Um, I think that's, that's a very personal uh, uh, question and a personal answer. Thank you for that sharing that. Um, I, I think that does a beautiful job of summing up. Uh, the students, you've got to have a commitment, you've got to have a passion for learning, and you're going to be learning from some of the best in the industry. So at this point, I think everybody, and we appreciate everything that you've contributed. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, staying for our Q&A. And I'm going to jump back in and just throw in some last details so at this point, we've covered a great deal of information regarding uh, the programs, but just in case we missed anything, feel free to email or call us during our business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the phone number is 310-243-2075, or you can email us at learn at csudh.edu. And when you're ready to take your next steps and register, our registration office will be standing by to take your registrations via phone. Uh, you can call 310-243-3741 and simply click on option number one. But remember, also, if you've been a recent student, you can simply log into your MyCSUDH portal and register for your courses online. So this concludes our construction project management information session. And we wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, again, feel free to connect with us via our website, uh, on our social media, on our Facebook page, and our LinkedIn group. And remember to register early to get your spot in your preferred classes. Now, we'd love to get your feedback about today's session. So please let us know how we can improve the quality of any of the information provided by visiting bit.ly slash CSUDH dash webinar dash feedback. Now we'll stay in the session for a few more minutes to give everyone a moment to jot down last minute notes and download the construction project management information kit from the chat panel. The recording for this session will be online shortly on our website and our LinkedIn social media as well. 
When you're ready to leave, simply click the red leave button in the corner of your screen. Once again, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and we look forward to working with you soon. Take care everyone.